Hello, everybody. This is Gerald Salenti, and it's Tuesday, October 22nd, 2024. And your new Trends Journal will be out shortly. And here's the cover. You got it? Numbskulls race to the White House. Yep. Minnie Mouse and Donald Duck, the Disney White House. Two losers. That's the best America could do. Hey, did you see uh, Trump? He was at passing out French fries at McDonald's. Wasn't that great? Yeah. Junk food, swallow junk food, swallow junk crap. That's the level of America. McDonald's, that's the height. Yep. And then Harris, just nothing more than. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Just horseshit. Just horseshit. What a disgrace. What a disgrace. This is the best America has. Yep. Anyway, as we said, and we could be wrong, of course, you know, he's right all the time. We believe Harris is going to win. And this is from the toilet paper record on um, Monday. Today's Tuesday. Yesterday. Trump becomes the star of Harris's closing pitch. Closing pitch. The video screen lit up with a 67-second montage of Mr. Trump bragging about overturning Roe versus Wade. Yep, she said, see for yourself, she told these people in Wisconsin, gesturing to two large television screens installed at the rally. Let's roll the clip. And there's Trump saying that he bragged about overturning Roe vs. Wade. And um, it's about abortion. Number one issue. Single issues. And so she's going to get the woman vote. She get. They say she's not going to get as many black votes as she is. Did, did, you know, Biden did, but I doubt it. I think she will. And it's a freak show. It's, again, who's your favorite freak? Again, the Disney World White House, Minnie Mouse and Donald Duck. And what's so serious about this, and it's not the issue of the people, are the geopolitical tensions going on. Most people have no idea about it. Again, you look at the facts. It's reported. You know, this isn't a major issue of the people. They don't know what's going on. And... As they say, it's the economy, stupid. That's number one. This is number two, the abortion issue. So anyway, it's a numbskulls race to the White House. And on to the markets today, they were flat. Oil prices went up, even though, you know, the global economies will look like they're going down. That's why oil prices are so weak. But the Middle East war is going to keep ramping up. And there is not a peep from the prostitutes about the skyrocketing gold prices, not a fucking word, hardly a peep, hardly a peep. Hey, it was the Trends Journal. That's right. The only magazine in the world that called 2024 a golden year for gold back on January 2nd. As we just went on the air, gold prices are 2007 hundred and forty seven dollars an ounce up over seven hundred dollars an ounce since we made that forecast and it's a reflection of where the economy is going and it's a reflection of the geopolitics but we won't talk about that because you're not allowed to talk about it on the mainstream media you got to keep swallowing this shit remember you're going to mcdonald's so there we got it and and Bitcoin is around a sixty seven thousand four hundred dollars a coin, still in the strong range. Upside stronger than the downside. And again, like today with the announcement that Joint Denny's closed one hundred and fifty stores. They're closing everywhere. Again, week after week, we have businesses going out of business in your Trends Journal and people losing their jobs. Week after week after week. So when they're saying that things are solid, it's total. And the, you know, the bullshit alert is right in front of everybody's eyes. It's gold is shining. I've been at this for 45 years. Yeah. 
This book, Trend Tracking, far better than Megatrends, Time Magazine, shows how he became a trend forecast when the Iranian conflict broke out. And he taught us to hate Iran. And I said, no, this is going to drive up gold and oil prices. Forget what you, with the crap that they're selling you. And that's when I quit my job and became a trend forecaster. I turned $5,000 bets into playing the futures markets into almost three quarters of a million dollars back then. I lost a lot of it, but I kept enough to quit my job and start to trend forecasting. You know, I was a young guy just growing up. We are in the most perilous socioeconomic and geopolitical times in my lifetime. And again, when you're looking at the data, the Denny's closing down, you're seeing visits to casual. And, um, same store sales traffic at U.S. restaurants, according to uh, Black Box Intelligence, was down 3.3%. And then when they're telling you that people are buying more, you're buying more. No, they're not. They're paying more to buy less. Because when you look at the increase in in consumer spending, it's about, you know, half of what the inflation rate is. So inflation is much higher. So you're spending more to buy less. Gold is going up because of the geopolitical and socioeconomic conditions that are not being reported in the media. And that is going to be, it is one of the major part, points of our economic update in this Trends Journal. Again, I'm broken hearted to see where it's going here. You know, I, I don't want, you know, because you think I want gold prices to keep going up because I have gold. I know why they're going up and it's breaking my heart. All right. There's going to be a correction at some point, but I've never seen it rise this fast without a correction so far. And then we have, um, again, trends on the global economic front. When the economy falls, jobs go with it. There's over 100 weeks we've been doing this. Going out of business trends, which is not reporting. The debt to GDP, debt, debt to GDP levels is skyrocketing because there's, only, there's almost a $100 trillion of debt. You want to know why gold is going up? You don't have to be a genius to figure this out. There's no fucking way they're going to do this. And then you'll see what's going on in China. They're dumping more and more and more and more money in there to artificially prop up the economy, which is not going to be propped up because they had three years of zero COVID policy and the place was overbuilt with the boom when they went into the World Trade Organization. And they made a terrible situation much worse, but they're dumping in, you know, billions and billions and hundreds of billions of yuan. That is artificial. They have debt to GDP levels over 300%. So it's going to get worse. So again, we have a uh, spotlight on China's economic struggles and the bigs keep getting bigger with the DCB cut rates. But what does that really mean when you're looking at the downgrades of Germany and, and France, the number one and number two countries in, in the EU, this is serious times ahead. And of course we have articles on, um, that you're not going to want to miss, and it's by uh, Gregory Manorino. Why is no one talking about this? Maximum saturation. That's right. I asked him, what do you think is going to happen with the markets? And he told me, and we're on the same page. So you better prepare for the worst. And again, we have trends in technocracy. And who writes the technocracy? Joe Duran. Yep. One of his books, The Synthetic Devolution. You get it on Amazon. Another one. Yeah. AI, Declining Humans. Yep. This is serious. A whole section on technocracy, whole section on the Israel war, what it means, what's next, what to expect. Featured guests articles. Brace yourself. A tsunami approaches. That's right. This is by... Uh, the Rutherford Institute, John and Nisha Whitehead, what they're doing here and what to expect with the government. The Curious Link Between Dementia and Sensory Impairments, article by Dr. Joseph McCola. And Trends in Cryptos, Trends I Views, Trends in Geopolitics, 
with the Ukraine war heating up and Zelensky's not getting what he wants. So watch out for a false flag before election day. They're going to ramp up this war. Yep. October surprise. So going back to what we are greatly concerned about and what is driving up precious metals prices that they're not talking about is the geopolitical conflict in the Middle East. I was a little kid. I was a premature baby. I was in an incubator for months. And again, I grew up as a kid in the Bronx. And the bullies pick on the littlest kid. Yep. Again, I learned how to be a fighter. But the bullies pick on the littlest kid. Israel is a bully. They're picking on little kids. Little Hamas. A tiny little nothing over there in Gaza with, what, two million people? Hezbollah. Oh, in a place called Lebanon with five million people? And a country the size of Connecticut? They're bullying the little guys. They go up against Iran. It's a different trip. You got it? 91 million Iranians, very sophisticated, the Persians. They've been building their military for generations in anticipation of the worst happening against 7 million Jewish people in Israel. There are about 9 million, but 20% of Arabs. So 7 million against 91 million. And now this just came out in the Toronto Times. Not the Toronto Times, excuse me, the Times of Israel. Netanyahu to Blinken. Assassination attempt against me can't be ignored. The two men discussed Israel's expected retaliatory strikes against Iran's ballistic missile attack on the Jewish state on October 1st. Yep. So it's okay for Netanyahu to slaughter anybody that he doesn't like. Like that guy Sinwa was just wiped out. Nasrallah, the top Hezbollah guy, the second Hezbollah guy, one Hezbollah guy after another. But you attack Netanyahu, how dare you? Of course, Israel has the right to defend themselves. Nobody else does. So this is how it reads. Iran and Hezbollah's assassination attempt cannot be disregarded. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, a little daddy's boy, an arrogant boy and nothing, the Blinken boy, my daddy, was the ambassador to, 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 to Hungary. And my uncle was the ambassador to to to. To Belgium, and I went to Dalton, I went to Harvard. I'm a little member of the club, an arrogant little boy. Been there 11 times and selling the American people the bullshit that we're there for a peace treaty. Anyway, quote, this is an issue of dramatic significance that cannot be ignored, Netanyahu, end quote, Netanyahu said. The two men discussed Israel's expected retaliatory strike against Iran's ballistic missile attack on the Jewish state on October 1st, Israel is expected to respond to the Hezbollah drone attack on Netanyahu's house that damaged the bedroom window. He hears his family over there, quote, the issue of the Iranian threat and need for both countries to join forces against it was raised. The prime minister's office said, adding that Netanyahu thanked Blinken for the U.S. support Quote, to fight against Iran's axis of evil and terrorism. They're ramping up the war. Reaffirming U.S. commitment to Israel, Blinken, quote, reaffirmed the United States' ironclad commitment to Israel's security, this little clown boy, Miller, 
the uh, mouthpiece for the uh, U.S. State Department said. Yep. It's not my business. What the hell are Americans doing there? Oh, Americans are gonna you're gonna Americans are gonna win? Hey, I grew up during the Vietnam War. You couldn't win that one. Let's see. Oh, the Iraq War lost that one. Oh, I forgot the Afghan War, the longest war in American history. You lost that one too. Oh, and you're gonna be successful in this one? Oh, and don't forget we gotta fight the Chinese too. I forgot about that. You got a bunch of losers here. This is serious. And that's why gold prices are going up like this. And no one's talking about it. Again, not a peep from the prostitutes, the media whores that get paid to put out by their corporate pimps and their government whoremasters about why gold prices are going up. This is serious and deadly serious. So do what you can to donate to Occupy Peace. And again, we're on the verge of nuclear annihilation. And very few are talking about it. Scott Ritter is. And again, tomorrow I'll be on with Judge Andrew Napolitano. And don't forget to subscribe to the Trends Journal. It's $2.50 a week. Or we'll subscribe to the uh, Wall Shit Journal for $5 a day at a toilet paper record, the New York Slime, for $4 a day. Again, nobody anywhere in the media had forecast what we forecasted. Nobody. So thanks for tuning in and uh, see you tomorrow, 6 p.m. Eastern time.